let us have a detailed discussion of review of related literature. So in module 1, we had partially discussed uh, review of related literature. It was not thoroughly um, scrutinized due to the, uh, the shortage of time as well as we divert our session to some other important things such as um, evaluating your work which is necessary at that time in order for us to move to the defense as a schedule. So this time, since you already have approved titles, uh, we will now have a detailed discussion of review of related literature. So we will have first strategies for writing literature reviews. So the objective of this lesson is to help you understand the purpose and basic requirements of an effective literature review to help you critically assess research materials, to develop strategies for inventing, organizing, and drafting a literature review, and last is to help you cite sources appropriately. So the purpose of a lit literature review is, um, first is when you say literature review, it is a critical look at the existing research that is significant to the work that you are carrying out. So, based on this statement, it will further explain now the research you have by looking into the detailed content of the related support that would further explain about your research. So, that would mean to provide background information. So what are the proofs of those theories and um, information you have attached or cited in your research? And then to establish importance, that should also have some resources that would support the importance of your research. To, de to demonstrate familiarity, to carve out a space for further research. So these are then the purpose of review of related literature or in a very simple definition when we conduct a literature review that is just to dig out other information that will support our um, hypothetical guess or of any statement that further explain your research. So characteristic of effective literature review. So these are the things that would strongly define or strongly support your literature review. One is outlining important research trends, assessing the strengths and weaknesses of existing research, identifying potential gaps in knowledge, establishing a need for current and or future research project. So that's why uh, in some universities, or colleges, they will conduct first um, systematic literature review to fully understand uh, the research <coughs> uh, the research agenda that they selected or say to uh, establish a good gap or framework of the problem that they have in mind. So uh, another way as well that uh, to fully understand also the, the flow or the entirety of the research is to conduct a meta-analysis or systematic literature review. So steps for writing a lit review. One is planning, reading and research, analyzing, drafting, and revising. So when you say planning, the keyword here or the guiding question here is what type of literature review am I writing? So in your case, you already have an approved title and uh, the approved title you have is you already also partially done some literature map of that title. So uh, you can um, recycle those uh, journals that you have searched as well as not just recycle but you can also reuse it and cite it to some uh, points that you could include in your uh, review lead. So in planning phase, focus on what is the specific thesis, problem, or research question that may that my that my literature review helps to define. 
So, this is the, the guiding question. Second is identifying a focus that allows you to sort and categorize information at the same time elim eliminate irrelevant information. So, these two questions will help you then uh, do the, the or redefining or say crafting the planning phase or say what's the focus of your research. So, type. So, when you say what type of literature review am I conducting? So, there are types of literature review that can be theory. That means you're going to lay down or present the different theoretical arguments about your study. It could also be methodology, policy, qualitative, or say quantitative. So, it's a scope. There's also a boundary when you write a literature review. So, what is the scope of my literature review? What types of sources am I using? Then, when you say academic discipline, what fields am I working in? And for the reflection, that means after you have read and dissected all the information you have gathered, you're going to take a moment to answer each of the questions in the planning section of your packet about a literature review you are currently working on or plan to work on. So that is, how many of the questions could you answer? What questions did this short exercise list for you? So that would be the guiding question here for the reflection as you done with the planning phase. Another stage for part of lit review writing is reading and researching. So what materials am I going to use? So I have mentioned this uh, most of the time that the acceptable materials you can use for your review lit will be journals, majority will be published journals, and then books, and secondary will be the web pages. So reading and researching. So collect and read materials and summarize sources by author, author's main purpose, author's theoretical perspective, the research methodology, intended audience, principal point, conclusion, thesis content or question, how is the author position supported, how this study relate to other study of the problem or topic, then what does this study add to your project. So, in the table that I created during our first session of the subject, I, uh, I provided you a table where you can segregate the different important or the important content of every sources or material that, material that you have gathered. So, there you have the weaknesses, the strength, and the application of the algorithm you have searched or if not the application where would this uh, certain concept be applied okay analyzing will be how do I assess existing research and for the analyzing part a uh, literature review is never just a list of studies it always offers an argument about body of research so we have Analysis, of course, in two levels, so individual sources, body of research, and then these are then the four analysis tasks of the literature review. So we have task of literature review. So there are four tasks here that you could see. Summarize, synthesize, critic, and then compare. So when you summarize and synthesize, in your own words, summarize and or synthesize the key findings relevant to your study. So what are the guide questions that will help you construct your uh, summarization and synthesis? One is, what do we know about the immediate area? Second, what are the key arguments, key characteristics, key concepts, or key figures? Then, what are the existing debates or theories? And last is, what are common methodologies used? Or what common methodologies are 
used. So these are then the different way of how you are going to summarize and synthesize your review lit. Then sample language for summary and synthesis. So Norma, Norma Dean has demonstrated. So these are the keyword here. And then early work of Hussman and Swartz and Graves was concerned with then we have compared algorithm for handling, so the study of these two persons, C.L. Said and Stern, they compared algorithms in terms of handling, it's, a, uh, I don't, uh, it's up to you what would be the next. And then additional work by Karasawa et al. and Azadevar and Pari et al. deals with, so we have now... A synthesis example and a summary for the normadin and this one so another example of a summary and synthesis <clears throat> under the restriction of small population four possible ways to avoid premature conversions were presented the first one is to revise the gene operators grief Griffith and Miles applied advanced two-dimensional gene operators to search the optimal cross-section of a beam and significantly improve results. The second way is to adjust gene probability, that is, delete and topping adopted a variable mutation probably and obtain an outperformed result. So, this one is an author, and as you could see here uh, it summarizes now uh, a certain study for example the study of V50 and miles and at the same time uh, it also synthesized the work of uh, lead and tapping you know, so uh, you have now uh, the lead and tapping is an example of the statement at the last part is an example of a summary while uh, synthesizing the work of the Griffiths and Miles in terms of two dimensional gene operators so that's how uh, the summary and synthesis work but in your part uh, there will be a lot more than this because uh, obviously this is just an example so Piaget theory of stages of cognitive development and Erickson's stages of psychological development are commonly used for educational psychology. So this is comparison to uses now cognitive uh, development, both, but of different uh, area. The one is cognitive, the other one is the psychosocial. And another study in 1997 also, uh, we have Piaget describe characteristic behaviors, including artistic ones such as drawing, as evidence of how children think and what children do as they as they progress beyond developmental milestone into and through stages of development. So the last statement explain now a summary of the work of Piaget. So comparison and critic. So with comparison and critic, from the word itself, comparison you're go you're going to compare and critic is you're going to um, look for some gap of the researches. So when you does critiquing, probably the the goal is defining the gap. So evaluates the strength and weaknesses of weaknesses of the work. So the guide question here is how do the different studies relate? What is new, different, or controversial? Then what views need further testing? So this one could be an area of uh, investigation or an area of new research again. What evidence is lacking, inconclusive, contradicting, or too limited? And then last is, what research designs or methods seems unsatisfactory? So, in this uh, ambiguous 
uh, but float study Jones and Wang so to compare this general result results reflecting the stochastic nature of the flow of goods are similar to those reported by Rosenbalt and Wang. so this is again another example of comparison so the critical response to the poetry of Phillips Wheatley often registers disappointment or surprise. Some critics have complained that the verse of this African American slave is insecure, uh, imitative, and incapacitated. At worst, the product of a white man mind. Others, in contrast, have applauded. So, Whitley critic of Anglo-American discourse, a revision of literary model. So, um, the comparison, the first statement is a comparison, and the last uh, statement is an example of a critic. <clears throat> So, the Situationist model has also received its shares of criticism. One of the most frequent cited shortcomings of this approach centers around the assumption that individuals enter into the work context tabula rasa. Tabula rasa. So, again, um, this is a statement of a critic. So, evaluative adjectives, so we have unusual, small, simple, exploratory, limited, after careful. And then analyzing, putting it all together. So, how are you going to put now things into one uh, statement or one context? So, once you have summarized, synthesized, compared, and critiqued your chosen material, you may consider whether these studies. So, one, demonstrate the topic chronological development. Sometimes, you're going to present it by year in chronological order. Show different approaches to the problem. This is about how the different study traverse or say changes through time. So, different approaches. Show an, on, uh, an, an ongoing debate. So, the different notions of every author. Center on a seminal studies or study. Then, demonstrate a paradigm shift. So, when you say paradigm shift, um, same, same goal, same context, but it changes another approach or method. So, what do researchers know about this field? What do researchers not know? Why should we further study this topic? And why will my study, and what will my study contribute? So, the last part is the gap. And once you have identified the gap, then you can also provide your hypothetical solution of the gap you have identified. So, balancing and summarizing, uh, we will skip to this one because uh, we don't have the book for this. Then we have now drafting. So, what am I going to write? So, drafting <coughs> to help you approach your draft in a manageable fashion. This section addresses the following topics. So, exigency thesis statement, organization, introduction, and conclusion, then citations. So, thesis statement, um, you already have as well crafted your uh, problem or statement. So, the thesis statement offers an argument about the literature. So, it may do any or any of or a combination of the following. So, offer an argument and critical assessment of the literature. So, that is the topic plus claim. Provide an overview of current scholarly conversations. Point out gaps or weaknesses in the literature. 
And last is relate the literature to the larger aim of the study. So example of a thesis statement. We have, in spite of these difficulties, we believe that preserve pre-service elementary art teachers and classroom teachers need some knowledge of stage and theories of children's development. So this part here that is being underlined, this is or this statement needs to have a literature review that will support you now theories that um, children's development in terms of um, stage, I mean, uh, in terms of stage uh, theories, uh, we have, it, it needs to be supported or it should have some previous researches that uh, support this uh, claim. So research on the meaning of expertise of home has proliferated over the past two decades, particularly within the disciplines of sociology, anthropology, psychology, human geography, history, architecture, and philosophy. Many researchers now understand home as a multidimensional concept and knowledge, the presence of a need for multidisciplinary research in the field. However, with the exemption of two exemplary article, articles by Debray and Somerville. Few have translated this awareness into genuinely interdisciplinary studies of the meaning of home. If you're going to compare the first statement over the second, the second statement is there is a claim about few have translated this awareness. There is a few uh, translation of awareness into genuinely, genuinely and interdisciplinary studies of the meaning of home, which has uh, someone which has been supported by the study of Dupuy and Somerville. So unlike with the first statement, it does not have any author that supports now the claim as to the need of some knowledge of stage theories for children's development or of children's development. So that's the thesis statement. Another one here, uh, as you can see, this is another statement that is not supported by any study or of any, uh, yeah, any conducted, previous conducted study. So polyvalency refers to the simultaneous binding of multiple lig ligands on one entity to multiple receptors on another. Polyvalent interactions are ambiguous in nature, with example including the attachment of viruses to target cells, bacteria to cells, cells to other cells, and the binding of antibodies to pathogens. In this article, I review recent development and polyvalency and discuss the numerous opportunities for chemical engineers to make contribution to this existing field, whose applications include drug discovery, tissue engineering, and nanofabrication. So this is again another thesis statement wherein uh, the statement here is review on recent developments of polyvalency and discuss the numerous opportunities about polyvalency in a study. So it's about the polyvalency and the conduct of reviewing all studies about polyvalency. So in this article, review and critique scholarship on place-based education in order to consider the ingredients of a critical place-based pedagog pedagogy for the arts and humanities. So we begin by reviewing ecohumanism's call for a more locally responsive education in light of marginalization of place and community. Okay, so in organization, five common 
approaches to organizing the body of your paper. That includes topical, distance to close, debate, or chronological, and last is seminal study. So, most common approach is the topical characteristic. So, breaks the field into number of sub-fields, sub-areas, or approaches. And then, discuss each subsection individually, sometimes with critics of each studies. Then, most useful for organizing a large body of literature that does not have one or two studies that stands out as most important or a clear chronological development. Topical language, um, three important areas of these fields have received attention and has been approached from two perspectives. The most uh, important development in terms of C has been an important area of study in this field. So this is how an example of topical language, distance to close characteristic. So an example, um, a type of topical organization with studies grouped by their relevance to current research starts by describing studies with general similarities to current uh, research and end with, uh, <coughs> with studies most relevant to the specific topic. So most useful for studies of methods or models. So distance to close, typical language, method or model. So these are... Uh, citing out the model or the method slightly similar to current research addresses drawing upon method more similar to current research this study supplies the procedure used in method model O similar to current research so debate characteristics so these are examples of which um, another type of topical approach which is a chronological component to so emphasize various strands of research in which proponents of various models openly characterize one another so most useful when clear opposing positions are present present in the literature so these are example of that debate so ito yung kanyang language or the topical language when you encounter a debate or when you are going to construct a debate type of literature review so there have been two, three, four distinct approaches to this problem. The first model, the second model, so this is how you are going to plot the DB type. So chronological, the characteristic of this is list of studies in terms of chronological development. Useful the field displays clear, de clear development over a period of time. So uh, commonly when you will have... Um, say so modifications of an algorithm the very or the nearest way of presenting the progress is doing it in a chronological order or studies so you have linear progression paradigm shift so what's the language when you use chronological order so the subject was first studied by in date so as you can see if the subject of the statements is about date then you are probably using the chronological way of presenting the shape the, the changes of the of the algorithm for example seminal study characteristics so begins with detailed description of extremely important study later work is organized using another pattern 
most useful when one study is clearly most important or central in laying the ground work for future research so these are then the language of a seminal study most important research on this topic was the study by x in the following x study research fell into two comps extended x work so this is how the seminal works so another exercise but we'll not be doing this we'll just uh, skip this out so another is introduction indicates scope of the literature review so you will have at least a uh, paragraph that will introduce your lit, lit lit review provide some background to the topic demonstrate the importance or need for research make a claim offer an overview map of the ensuing um, discussion <coughs> so there is so this is an example of an introduction there is currently much controversy over how non-human primates understand the behavior of other animate beings on the other hand, they might simply attend to and recall the specific action of others in particular contexts, and therefore, when that context recurs, be able to predict their behavior. On the other hand, they might be able to understand something of the goals or intentions of others and thus be able to predict others' behavior in a host of novel circumstances. Several lines of evidence and a number of anecdotal observations have been um, adu added on both sides of the question. But few studies directly address the questions, do non-human primates understand the intentions of others? So this is now the question or the statement and um, the the support of every um, claim as to whose author is that or who owns that uh, study and the statement is also served so creating now the conclusion so you would also have the last statement of your review lit where you are going to put the summary the summary of the main findings of your review the provide closure explain so what implications for future research or connections to the current research so this is an example of the conclusion in summary although there is some subjects uh, suggest evidence that chimpanzees may understand others intentions there are also negative findings and a host of alternative explanation as a consequence uh, currently it is not clear whether chimpanzees distinguish between intentional and accidental actions performed by others in contrast there are several studies indicating that children as young as 14 months of age have some understanding of others intention but the lack of comparative studies make it difficult to know how children compare to apes so this study is the first to directly compare children, chimpanzees, and orangutans with the use of nonverbal tasks in which the subject were to discriminate between the experimenter's intentional and accidental action. So, um, this is how the conclusion is constructed, wherein uh, there is a notion of the of of the claim in the first sentence and the different arguments in the in the middle of the sentence and the last study is signifying now as to what will be the next direction of the study so citing sources that can be paraphrase key ideas use code introduce quotations effectively use proper in-text citations to document the source of ideas and maintain accurate bibliographical bibliographic records so avoid plagiarisms irrelevant quotations and unintroduced quotations so citing so these are then example of citings when you double quote and paraphrasing 
that means you are going to paraphrase the statement of a certain author in order not to be plagiarized. So revising, how can I fine tune my draft? So these are the tips on revising. In title, is my title consistent with the content content of my paper? Introduction, do I properly introduce my review? Thesis, does my review have a clear aim? Body, is the organization clear? Have provided headings? Topic sentence, have I clearly indicated the major ideas of each paragraph? Transition, does my writing flow? Conclusion, do I provide sufficient closure? And then spelling and grammar. So writing, a literature review summary. Uh, as you read, try to see the big picture. Your literature review should provide an overview of the state of the research. Include only those source materials that help you shape your argument. Resist the temptation to include everything you read. Then balance summary analysis as you write. Keep in mind your purpose for writing. How will this review benefit readers? How does this review contribute to your study? And be meticulous about citations. So thank you. That's all.